thanks to Professor Kazuchi, who introduced us to beautiful Ischia Island. So instead of going to, into the uh, German tradition, as he announced, I think that antiquity is really the belt that has us all. It is the um, uh, origin of what we are tackling about now in when we are talking about women in sport. And uh, a warm welcome also from the Center for the History of Women Philosophers. And surely I will uh, bind my ideas for a few minutes uh, that I will present to you, to these ideas, talking about antiquity, talking about also about the problems why is it possible that women are excluded from sport? And I will introduce some thoughts to you that may explain uh, to you why this exclusion from sports or the ancient idea of including women into sports was a major political issue. So thank you very much and thank you to Clara Mavellia for having me. I'm pleased to be at this event, which is dedicated to an important topic. We all know that the question of which sport uh, 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 that women are allowed in the world and are not able to participate in sport uh, uh, activities around the world as they should. And is it not disturbing to understand that even doing the sport for the bodily health has become an issue that we have to treat as something special, that sport is becoming a matter of discussion and has to be legitimized? The problem of the exclusion of women from sports goes back much further, and you should not be wondered about the fact that women in sports is something that shapes the cultural gap in which we still are living today. So I would like to share my thoughts on that, on the connection of sport, but however, how sport is connected to music. I will introduce you to the fact that in many countries where women are restrained for doing bodily activities, they are also held back doing music. And it may be something strange to you, and perhaps you have never connected that these two disciplines have uh, something uh, uh, together and uh, why it is still in several cultures connected that women are excluded from sport and music. So it might be that you know that you are aware when you think of the Iran, which is now heavily discussed and disputed, you know perhaps the film uh, uh, no Land Song, which was a film that women are not allowed to sing in public. And even 40 years ago, when the uh, holy uh, uh, Iran was installed, then women have been banned almost from all activities in sport. How is it possible? What do you think? How do these things together? So Nazarene Baziri tells us in uh, tells us that the Iranian Ministry of Sports, though announced in January 2019 again that the Islamic Federation of Women in Sport should resume its activities, and um, and it was the daughter from the very important Iranian president Hashimi Rafzanjani who was the head, Fazer Razanjani, and however, even she was so very much uh, uh, opposed by political and religious hardliner, and this whole activity to bring women back in sport was virtually crippled, and the funding ceased again. So the current situation in still many countries of the world shows that the issue of women in sport is still a virulent one. 
But how is it that both disciplines are connected to each other and deeply connected? And this is a fact which comes from the ancient idea. So since 2,600 years, I will you introduce to that, uh, uh, the idea of uh, uh, sport and the education in music as the education of the soul have thought that it should be one thing where males and females should be educated in. And of course, since 2,600 years, this is an issue that has been highly disputed. So um, it is a debate exemplified to us, like so many other important debates from antiquity, by the philosophers Plato and Socrates. When Plato is establishing his ideal society, so they talk how uh, people should be educated. And then it is uh, discussed that gymnastics is not an end in itself, but it serves to preserve and educate the soul, its strength and discipline. And that it is important that sport is not only done as one thing, as one discipline only, but must always be taught in harmony with the education of the soul, and that is with music. Music and sport are regarded to be one thing, and it is a very different kind of education. A soulful education of sport is, which is intended. To argue in favor of this, uh, so Plato and Socrates here in the function in the Republic reflect how sport would look like if it is done without music. And this is a quote, those who do sport only to become strong and think that strength is an advantage of athletic training are mistaken. It educates a person who becomes capable of living in ignorance with violence and savagery like an animal if it is done without music and without the education of the soul. This man is educated by nothing. Uh, but I think we understand that this is the form of sport that is done today. On the other hand, it is said that only the cultivating by music or by philosophy, music in that time is the education in harmony and so on, is not good either if it is done without sports and gymnastics. It is said the person who lives only for music and revels in sweet melodies will lose all courage and that person will melt away. This is a reason why both things are belonging very much and narrowly, uh, narrowly intertwined. Humans must learn both arts for the courage in us, that is, the soul should not become deaf and blind. Music is the formation of the soul which is necessarily bound to the body, and the body must not and should not divest itself of this faculty to be in harmony. So to harmonize soul and body and those who are able, only those may be called philosophers and are able to, to reign and to see the world as it is. And then the question comes up and Socrates says, but it is clear that we have to educate males and females in these disciplines. Um, and it says, of course, we have to educate women in the same way as men if we want to use them in the same way. Yes. So we have to teach them music and gymnastics. And now, so women must learn all these two arts and all over exercise it. And now the important passage from which we learn how much it has been disputed beside these insights. 
And Socrates says, but well, so one of the uh, Athenian people sitting thereby are saying, so, but the Athenians, will, to them, it will seem unusual and therefore ridiculous when women are educated in the same way as men are doing exercise naked in the gymnasium. And Socrates replies, what is more ridiculous? You have not educated women or let's say educated in a way which is not full of harmony. And then, so the famous passage is women have to practice naked with naked men on the parade ground. And not only the young ones, but also the old ones and the old men, and all of whom are already wrinkled and no longer pleased to the eye, pleasing to the eye at all, but still loving to exercise. So this is uh, Plato Republic 451 for those who want to look it up. So, and then the Athenian again asks, must we fear the ridicule, uh, the ridicule of the people if they react in this way to such a change, if it occurs? Not at all. This is ridiculous because it is the good of the state. I present these passages from Socrates and Plato to you to understand that this is a discussion in our culture since 2,600 years of education. Can you understand how slowly it moves and how strong are still all those practices formed in violence and not the harmonious style of doing sport with music. The example of Seya Spes, surely from the beautiful island of Ischia, shows that the platonic practice remained and was lived there. And of course, even today, it is demanded to become a reality. Something else is important to realize how long it takes for spiritual education to reach the culture of the people. The very thing that Socrates rejected is still practiced. It is sport without teaching the soul for the sake of the wild and violent power. We, however, can also draw a further conclusion that sport and music as it is practiced today must form and shape a change in our cultures, cultures. We are still far away from a utopian society where men and women are equally educated in the soul and in the body. From these words, we learn that not only sport must change, but that culture must become a culture of the spirit where these disciplines become connected. This is the important message associated with such an event as we are talking about today. The exclusion of women from sport is related exactly to a change in society. And we see this in many places in the world. And we must understand how less has changed since then. Without women, sport has become a harmony less a training without spirit. In sport and its exclusion of women, a philosophy of wilderness has taken place. It oppresses women and pushes them out of sport, which, to use Plato's words, is, a, is as soulless as all other violent practices. To promote sport is to educate the soul as well as the body, men and women. The struggle for equality in sport is not a question of leisure, but one of how to shape the state of the future. Thank you very much, Clara.